because there's a lot of things we can learn from the beginnings genesis 28 10 to 16 the bible says don't worry you can have your say uh, and you can just keep praying understand that all right now jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward aran so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and he stopped reach to heaven and there the angels of god were ascending and descending on it and behold the lord stood above it and said i am the lord god of abram your father and the god of isaac the land on which you lie i will give to you and your descendants also your descendants shall be as the dust of the heart you shall spread abroad to the west and the east to the north and the south and in you and in your seed all the families of the heart shall be blessed behold i'm with you and will keep you wherever you go and i will not leave you now verse 16 said jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the lord is in this place and i did not know it then he was afraid how awesome in this place this is none other than the house of god and this is the gate of heaven and jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it and he called the name of that place Bethel. but the name of that city was lox can you go very quickly to verse chapter 35 chapter 35 genesis and 35 And then we just read one verse verse one then god said to jacob arise go to bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to god who appeared to you when you fled from the face of your brother revelations now revelations 1 and verse 6 revelations 1 i'm just setting foundations here 1 and verse 6 all right importantly and the bible says and he has made us kings and priests to his god and father to him be glory dominion forever and ever can I have an amen all right for a few minutes i want to speak to us on the altar the priest and prayers the altar the priest and prayers father thank you for the entrance of the word give light and even understanding unto the simple as simple folks we've come tonight to learn at your feet Father, I make my tongue the pen of ready writer. Father, and I declare your word. Let your word have a free course amongst us. Let us run with your word. Let us become realities and embodiment even of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I want to speak to you as a prophet of God. I want to speak to you as a servant of the Most High. And I want you to know that there are certain principles that are important for you to possess in life if you are going to walk in the reality of God's plan for your life. There are certain spiritual principles, spiritual realities uh, you must walk in. Walk in. Let me start by first saying that the scriptures as you have it, the Bible as you hold it, uh, it's a continuum. Many times you and I see the scriptures uh, and there is a dichotomy in the scriptures. That means you say the Old Testament is different from the New Testament. Uh, it's actually a continuum. Somebody said, you know, the Old Testament is a shadow of which the new testament is the light allow me to say to you that the old testament is the touch of which you will walk in in the light of the new testament therefore there are certain things in the new testament that will not be clear except you first of all search it out in the old i said that because i'm going to make certain references to old testament today and so that you can understand that the scriptures is whole and so shall we go together so let's talk about the altar altars are spoken again and again in the old testament and altars are battered in scriptures at the places of encounters all right the altars in old testament were born were battered at the place of an encounter what is an encounter an encounter is the supernatural manifestation of the spiritual when god manifests himself to man when you have a spiritual manifestation you call it an encounter some of you are here i've said you have seen visions before you have seen dreams some of you felt you've seen jesus come into your room what you have experienced is a spiritual manifestation of god he came to you and that is not something new it has always been even in old testament times abraham had the place of his encounter he called it shechem he built an altar to god Bethel. he built another altar in Bethel the altar again he renewed it when he came out of egypt sir. he had an altar again he had an altar in genesis 13 he called it hebron when a man encounters or meets with god at a particular place 
he built an altar there to God that meets with him. Therefore, in Old Testament times, if you will encounter God, if you have a spiritual manifestation of God, you will therefore build an altar and you will say, this is here I worship the God that met with me. Therefore, it is a physical representation of a spiritual reality. That's what an altar is. A physical representation of a spiritual reality. That means I met with God here and this is something physical to show. When David sinned and God was going to destroy, was going to punish him, the Bible says that an angel of destruction went uh, even to Jerusalem. Uh, and the Bible says God opened the eyes of David and he saw the angel of destruction standing at the feet of Arwana. And the Bible says God told him, uh, he said, go and sacrifice uh, even at the threshing floor of Arwana, even in Hebron. And, and, and the scripture says he did that. Uh, and as he did that, he built also there an altar. So if you read through scriptures, you will discover that great men have altars. It's the place where they encounter God. What does that mean? It means that they know that if I had met with God here before, I can meet with him even now. Do you understand that? So 20 years ago, you met with God at a particular place. You know that if I also return to that place, I will meet with God. Because if God had appeared at that place, it is no longer a natural place. It has become supernatural. Why? Because God and ever God and heart met at that place, and God is unchanging. He will also meet with me even at that place. So an altar in our own language is what we call an encounter. I know many people who have come to me and say, I had an encounter yesterday. I was just shaking on my bed. I was just vibrating at my bed. You know, if it was Old Testament time, when you wake up, you are going to build an altar there. But the altar of the New Testament is in your spirit. Oh, Bible told us that when they built an altar, in the old testament in that temple of old in the temple in the wilderness they built the temple and they also built an altar and it was on that altar that they continually make sacrifices therefore you have become therefore an altar was in the temple is that not so therefore god has stayed in you so you have become the temple of god your spirit has become an altar to god is someone listening to me let me say that to you in old testament times an altar was in the temple if you look at the tent of the tabernacle the altar where they sacrificed was at the tent of the tabernacle and when they built the temple of solomon scripture told us that he built an altar in front of that temple and therefore when you want to get to the altar you first of all get into the temple is that not so because the altar was inside the temple allow me to say to someone today that you have become the temple of god the spirit of the lord lives on your inside and therefore the altar of god is your spirit man follow me very closely as we proceed even tonight so now if you are the altar of god every altar has a priest someone who ministers at the altar and that takes me to priesthood listen let, let's just I, I, I've, I've done i've delved recently i've been delving into the old testament foundations and one thing i've discovered is that our culture and our context as africans relates more to the context of which the old testament was written do you understand that it, it, it therefore tells you something that if you find if you go to your village hello you know what i mean when i say go to your village i'm not talking about village on instagram if you go to your village you will see certain temples there do you understand that to obatala madioa or whatever names it goes by and that temple that altar you see in, 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 in as much as you have seen an altar you expect that there will be a priest of that altar it, 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 am i speaking to someone it might not be from your family line but there is a priest in your village that serves and ensures that the altar is active and that person is called a priest it's called a priest follow me very quickly very closely there are no priests without altars as there are no altars without priests every believer is supposed to have altars and open these altars and upon these altars we must sacrifice daily daily god told the old priesthood uh, he said let the oil continually burn why is it so so that fire may be unto god and he said you must also exchange uh, daily you must replace the bread upon this table meaning that the temple the altar must continually be active again the priest major task was to sacrifice on that altar listen to this you are god's priest you are god's temple Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. Bible says God has made you priest and king. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. It says he has, you have made priest and king even unto God. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. I wish I saw it on the screen so that you can follow, you can follow me. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Bible says you are a royal priesthood. 
so that you will be a priest. You are already a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So you are a priest. You, it's not on you. It's not. We are not talking about Levite here. We are all Levite unto God. Why? Because there are supposed to be sacrifices. Uh, scripture says in Hebrews chapter thirteen and verse fifteen. Uh, it says, "Offer unto God the sacrifices of your lips." Uh, is that not what he says? Sacrifice. Uh, therefore, there are sacrifices that must come uh, even from your altar. It's very basic. Uh, it's very important. Uh, you are God's priest, uh, and your altar must be active. Uh, and there are two things that must continually burn on your altar. It is the sacrifice of praise and of prayer. Say to your neighbors, the sacrifice of praise and of prayers. And today I want to speak on prayers. I want to speak on that fragrance of prayer. Hebrews 13, 15. Listen to this. And that's my emphasis. You know, I was studying this. And I discovered that by definition, we have reduced the potency of prayer. By the way we define prayer. When you define prayer as simply communication with God. What you are saying is that God speaks and you answer. That's all that it is. It's like a phone call. Let me tell you, prayer is bigger than that. Prayer is more than that. And so tonight, if you have a pain, I want to give you definition. What is the prophetic definition of prayer? Prophetic definition of prayer. What is prayer? What does it mean? Prayer is the offering of spiritual sacrifice to God. Prayer is not just saying he's speaking, I'm hearing no, 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 no. That reduces the potency of prayer. Prayer is offering spiritual sacrifices to God. You are the priest. And upon your altar, you are offering spiritual sacrifice unto God. Every morning when you wake up, every night before you sleep, you must offer spiritual sacrifice. Because that's what prayer is. Offering a spiritual sacrifice unto God. It is the meeting. I'm still defining it. It is the meeting of spirit with spirit. It is the meeting of spirit to spirit. Deep calling unto deeper. That's the prophetic definition of prayer. Spirit to spirit. Uh. Oh, channel of my spirit. Open up. <laughs> I am with the Father. Open up. Kila shunivra tila brosata. A communication between your spirit and God's spirit. Uh. The deep in you is reaching out uh, to the deep in him. Uh. That's what prayer is. Uh. It is the incense that rises uh, from your altars to the heavens. The incense. Uh, when you light, when they put fire upon that altar, there is a fragrance. There is an incense that goes. As you pray, an incense goes from your room. An incense goes from your church. An incense goes from that mountain. And it goes to heaven. That's what prayer is. And it does not stay there. Bible says, it returns to heart with heart-shaking possibilities, heart-shaking results. I do not just pray. It's not just talking to God. I'm offering a spiritual sacrifice. I'm a priest. Upon my active altar, I must pray. Upon my active altar, I must pray. Upon my active altar, there must be sacrifices going on. Going on. I told you before that Abraham, after he went to Egypt, he returned even to that altar, in, in, into that altar, even at Bethel. And the altar was not active. Bible says he rebuilt again the altar. Many of us will leave this place to go and rebuild again the altar. Villa do Shakatimara. You need to go again uh, to rebuild the altar of God. Uh, that you and God may have intimacy, koinonia, fellowship. Uh, that the deep in you may reach out uh, even to the deep in God. Uh, that you may enter into more because there is more. That you may enter into more because there are greater possibilities. Uh, that you may see greater results. Uh, why? Because he draws in the realm of endless possibilities. It's not just talking. Prayer is not hello. How are you doing, God? Thank you. I woke up this morning. Oh, that's all prayer, sir. But there is greater things about prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you what I just defined to you. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8. Follow me very quickly. I want you to go there. Revelation 5. Revelation 5 and verse 8. I want you to follow me there. Listen to this. Now, when you are taking the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense. That incense were prayers that had ascended from rooms, from rooms, from churches. And scripture says, bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Which are the prayers of the saints. Now, go, I want you to go to 8 now. Just flip to 8. And we'll read 4 and 5. Revelations 8. 4 and 5. And scripture says, And the smoke 
of the incense, which is the prayer of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled with fire from the altar, and he threw it to the heart, and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Why were those things there? Because people prayed, and the angels had to act. By them throwing that result back, there is earthquake. That's why I call it shaking result. Are you getting it now? When your prayer ascends, don't just sit down. Know that angels are released. Know that things are happening. Are you listening to me, somebody? Are you listening to me, somebody? Now, what is the purpose of prophetic prayers? I'll give you seven things. I want you to write it down because these seven things are the seven things we are going to pray for tonight. We have only seven prayer points. When I'm done, I am done. You can go over. You have seven prayer points tonight. Tell your neighbor, seven prayer points tonight. Seven prayer points tonight. Seven purposes of prophetic prayers. Seven reasons why you need to pray. Seven reasons why you must be a priest standing before your altar. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, how active is your altar? Number one. Why do we have to pray? Because it is the means of batting your prophetic purpose. Batting your prophetic purpose. That is the place uh, where your prophetic purpose is batted. That is the place uh, where destiny is batted. That is the place uh, where God moves in uh, and your life uh, becomes a spiritual cruise. <laughs> you just begin to enjoy God. You just begin to enjoy God. That is the realm you enter to. But before that happens, you must pray. People think we were just going to be on cruise. No. Listen to Paul. Writing to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. He said, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. There is a battle to fight. By them you may wage a good warfare. I know there are prophecies concerning your life. I know you understand what your purpose is. But hello, your purpose will not just come to pass. It's not automatic. Jesus said, Matthew 6, 10, uh, he said, you should pray, your kingdom come, uh, your will be done on earth. Uh, there is a need for there to be a connection uh, between your heavens and your heart, uh, so that results will begin to happen. Uh, there must be an opening up uh, of your heavens to your heart, uh, so that there might be results. Uh, your prophetic purpose will not be battered automatically, because God said it will be, does not mean it will be. <laughs> there must be prayers. I know you have seen people who had purposes, uh, and now they have given up. <laughs> Why? Because it's not coming to pass. If your own will not be a sorry case, you need to kneel. You need to stand before your altar and begin to say, Lika atike You have said it, you will do it. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not a son of man that you should repent. Have you said it? Will you not do it? Have you promised? Won't you make it good? Makata fatalia. You need to call forth what you have seen in the spirit. Prophecies that have been said to your life. You need to call it forth to manifestation on the earth. Prayer is batting the will of God. Prayer is not an option for the purpose-driven believer. Prayer is the fuel that his vehicle runs with. Your fuel, that is what you need. The two one that Jesus said, the parable 18, 1, to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are you a man? If you are a man of purpose, then you must know. Jesus said, men ought always. You need to always pray. Because if you don't pray, nothing will happen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, pray without ceasing. He wasn't saying don't sleep. He said there must be a consistency. He's talking about consistency in prayer. You don't pray today and then pray next week. You pray consistently. There must be a consistency even to your prayers number two prayer is the means of receiving prophetic instructions prophetic instructions prophetic instructions I told God you will set these altars on fire listen to this even if you listen to this message two weeks after now your altars will burn again I'm not praying. I know what I've said to God. It's a covenantal relationship. Is someone listening to me? His name is called Yahweh because he's the covenant-keeping God. Someone listen to this. Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. 
It was in the place of prayer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 13, the disciples, uh, the apostles gathered, prophets were amongst them. Uh, and as they gathered, they began to pray and to bless the name of the Lord. Uh, and the Bible says the Holy Spirit speak unto them uh, and said to me, separate uh, unto me Paul and Barnabas. Uh, prophetic instruction came uh, because men were praying. Uh, listen to this. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, life is in times and in seasons. Uh, the instruction for last season uh, is not the instruction for this season. Uh, some of you are still running with yesterday's instruction. God has moved on. You need to go to God to get prophetic instructions even for this new season. Allow me to say to you that the apostolic mandate of Paul and Barnabas came because they prayed. Because they prayed. After Paul was on his missionary journey, he could not go further because the spirit hindered them. And then he had a vision. You think he was dancing when he had the vision? He was pressing into the spirit. That's why I call it deep calling to deeper. That's why I call it spirit answering to spirit. That's what prayer is. Jesus said, pray without ceasing. Let your spirit be eternally connected to the father of all spirit. There must be a communication always going on in your spirit. Oh, you must have a conversation going on. You might be watching football, but a conversation must be going on. You might be singing, but a conversation must be going on. Lord, will you not do it? Inside my spirit, Lord, will you not do it? You might be snapping. Oh Lord, will you not do it? Oh, it does not matter what you are doing. But there must be a deep calling to deep. Are you listening to me? Number three. Prayer is the means of obtaining mighty deliverances. Mighty deliverances. Many times by reducing prayer to communication between God and man. You are reducing the power, the potency of prayer. You don't understand that prayer is the means of batting deliverances. For prayer helps you even to deliver you even from the snares of the fowler. In the early church, Acts chapter 12, scripture says to us that James was taken by Herod the king and he killed him. And because he saw that he pleased the Jews, scripture says he also proceeded and he took Peter. And the Bible says the church, they say we will not take it any further. We will not take it any further. There must be a church that will arise in our generation and say we will not take it anymore. We will not take it any further. Scripture says they began to pray and endless prayer, continual prayer was made concerning Peter and because they prayed listen to this, listen to this because they prayed angels were released. Are you listening to me? And an angel went unlocked Peter, moved him out and Peter thought he was dreaming why? Because he was not praying it was not his work. Are you listening to me? It was a resultant effect of somebody's just prayer. And you see those people praying. And this is another thing you need to understand. Those people praying were not feeling goosebumps. They were not falling down. If they were falling down, when they knocked the door, they would have said, our prayer is answered. They didn't know anything about it. Scripture says when they even told them, Rhoda said, Peter is at the gate. They say it must be spirit. It must be spirit. It does not matter how God will do it. Just keep on pressing in. Because as you press in, angels will be released. As you press in, things are happening in righteousness. Me kato vali, can we pray one minute? Me te lika tava lute, abratoto vratete balayada, e koko saka, e le koko bakatutu, e grata kalataya, e feno fanana sombreheya, a la 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 kobaya, e braka kaka bolaya, e braka kaka bolaya, e ke 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 bala bala baya, a braka tabata bataya, e braka tabata bataya, e frata tabara taba, e brata tabara taba, Come on! Amen. Amen. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Have I told you of a man called Paul and Silas? Acts chapter 16. And Paul and Silas, they stayed. And then they prayed. And then they praised. And then there was an earthquake. You know what happened there? The angels just released the fire from heaven. And the earthquake happened. Why? Because there must be a result. There must be a result. The catalyst to heaven's result is your prayer. 
the catalyst to heaven's result is your prayer. <laughs> hey, Kala Tuba Hidaba. When the people pray, they access God. <laughs> Do not fear any man, but fear a prayerful man. He <laughs> matutubaka, he katayara. Because when the God appears for him, you cannot stand. We see that speaks and he comes to pass. When the Lord of hosts ordain him not, we know the God who ordains all things. And we have a hand that controls the world. He la kota katayaba. Until now, you have not asked anything in my name. Ask until your joy be full. There is yet a fullness of joy in the place of prayer. You need to press in. You need to dig in. Lord. Oh God. Obadiah had that revelation. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. He said, On Mount Zion, on Mount Zion, on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And the house of Jacob, there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. I don't know what side you are, but it's time to move to Zion. It's time to press in. Let your altar be active. It's time to activate your heart. It's time to press in in prayers. It's not time to cry. It's not time to mourn. It's not time to doubt. As he said it, hold him true to his word. He's not a liar. Pray. 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 Don't worry. I'll give you time to pray about these things. Number four, prophetic prayer is an alignment to the will of God. It's an alignment to the will of God. Prophetic prayer, ayakata, is an alignment to the will of God. The will of God is not always automatic. You need to pay, you need to pray that situations, forces, people, systems will align to favor you. Ah, listen to this. I will remember when I was in school, my lecturer told me, he said, if you don't pray, it doesn't mean you will not pass. He said, it doesn't mean you will not pass. He said, but it's better to pray so that you will not be in a bad mood while he's marking your script. It's better you pray so that you will not have missing grades. <laughs> hey, it's better to pray so that certain things will happen because there are systems that are ready to swallow your destiny. You have to pray. You have to pray. And say God's will will come to pass. Remember Daniel. Bible says Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2. Hi, Daniel understood by the books. He knew the set time. What did he understand by the books? Because Jeremiah had already prophesied how many years they were going to spend in exile. And the years had come. The years Yes, had come, but deliverance had not come. The years had come, but freedom had not come. The years had come, but liberty had not come. Bible says he began to pray. Listen to this. Until someone prays in your family, that thing will still be there. Until someone prays in your home, the devil will still continue to be as king. It is time to press in. God has finished his works. It is called the finished works of Calvary. But there is a continual work of redemption. There is a continual work of grace. There is a continual work of deliverance. You need to press in. I say, Lord, except you did not die on the cross. Tonight, tonight, I deliver my family from the bondage of poverty, from the bondage of penury. Kata, kata, shata, kata, liya. From barrenness, enough is enough. Hey, by Arosh. Hey, Yemaya. Agigunua. Hey, I love Epaphras. One of the guys I'm going to look for in heaven. He's been a man, a man by the name of Epaphras. Epaphras. Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Paul said, Epaphras, who is one of you? He said, he consistently pray. He labors fervently that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. It is time to wrestle and say, God told me I'm going to have my PhD. Why is it I cannot even enter the university? Doors open. Amala, amala, Kuataya. Hey! Imana eya, Imana eya, Kebala la loche, Giteli Arabasata. Hey! Nothing has happened, but God has said a lot of things. I don't understand why you are carrying what God has said as a book all around the world. They don't need to read it in a book, they need to see it in reality in your life. Hey! Pako Shata. 
I've come to challenge someone today. I am not a company of scripts uh, of people who write the scroll. Uh, I am a company of doers. Uh, I'm a company of those uh, who they write about. Uh, you cannot be on the same street uh, with an unbeliever uh, and you are selling something uh, and he's selling more than you uh, and you are there saying it just happened like that. Uh, that woman, uh, she had pressed into an affair. She has pressed into a babalawo. She has pressed into powers. Uh, it is time for you to elevate. Uh, it is time for you to go to an higher power. It's time for you to press in for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I love the translation that says for the spirit that is in you. He has conquered the spirit that is in the world. Glory to God. I don't care how many people are pursuing you in your family's house. When you pray, when you press in, when your altar is consistently burning, they just go away. You look at them and say, Nibono, Lord, where have they gone to? Hey, somebody needs to arise and say, Father, tonight I take my place in you. Are you praying? Are you praying? I take my place in you. Akara, Akara. Manda Shata. Oh. E Barano Mina Eki Adaba. Men are spirit. Men are spirit. It does not matter how difficult it seems. Men are spirit. God is the controller of spirit. Hey, Palataya. You have the right upon your altar, the remote control that controls the world. Hey, Palashata. Hey, Kapalataya. Hey, Fafafa. Hey, Palata. Someone help me with this. Hey. Hey. Are you following me? Are you following me? Ha ha. Number five. In order to create the word you have envisaged, you need to pray because you need to create the word you have seen. The word you have seen will not just happen. I used to say it in a way, though you may catch the vision of your life while sleeping, be assured it will not come to pass while you are sleeping. Be assured it's a certainty. Listen to this. There is a need to call forth the word you want. A word of purpose and destiny is waiting. The devil is also waiting. But you need to say no. I press into purpose. I press into destiny. Hey, it's by calling it forth in the place of prayer. You you need to call it for before you see it. You need to call it for. I'm not talking about confession. I've seen people confess and nothing happens because confession that is not backed up with the spirit of prayer is empty talk. It's just boasting. There must be prayer backing you up. There must be an altar upon which you stand and then you can confess. Chaba, chaba. Alignment. Hey! I don't know what you see when you close your eyes. Maybe you saw a boutique. Maybe you see a business empire. I don't know what you see. Maybe you see a lovely home. I don't know what you see. There is a creating of those words by your words. Hebrews 11 and verse 3, for by faith we understand. We understand that the word was framed after you have just prayed I love the way PFM used to say it he said one hour we are still joking listen to this after you have prayed in tongues one hour you now stand and say the word listens to me I declare that my ministry is open to the nations I declare that money comes to me I declare that all my needs are met I declare that favor is my portion I declare I walk upon my high places I declare I am not limited. I declare I'm advancing. I am calling forth that word. After you are praying, say, light be. Studio, be. Job, be. Husband, be. Wife, be. Customers, come! Why are you looking for a prophet? Upon your altar, Kelebo Shana, a Dete Hatutu Amatete. 
Bili bili kokoli kata kata yadawa. If you can pray, there is a God who can answer. A little alata yada. His ears are not deaf. Aya kata. Somebody say, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, Oh Rimini. Are you not seeing me? The heavens is the Lord. The earth are seeing giving to the sons of men. It will not invade your world without your permission. Hey. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. For we know that the things which are made, they are not made from things which are seen. The things which are temporal. I love the English word, the proper literal word that's supposed to be used there is what? Transient. Changing. Changing. Look at your life. Everything is subject to change. You are not married. Years from now, you will be married. Subject to change. Uh, you don't have money in your account now. He has to come. Money has come. Uh, but if you will see those changes, uh, he has to be from prayer. Uh, I know right now you are thinking, uh, what will I eat in the morning? What will I eat at night? Uh, you will come to a time. Uh, you begin to feed nations uh, because you are a person of prayer. Oh, that was why Jesus looked at them. I said, you people don't understand the power of prayer. You people don't understand there is a reason we pray. He said, ah, and for my house, for my temple, it shall be called an house of prayer. It is not entertainment. We have not come to make you laugh. We have come to contact heaven. There is an altar in this house. We have come to enter heaven. We have come to pray. We have come to pray. Number six. Listen to this. Don't, don't, don't stop. Don't, don't, don't stop. Stop praying. But write this down. Write this down. Write this down. This is very important. The prayer is a means of overcoming the hindrances of the devil. The devil is alive. The devil is well in the world. Don't let anybody lie to you. Glory, raw. Don't let anybody lie to you. The devil is alive. If you are going to overcome the devil, it has to be the instrumentality of prayer. Prophetic faith and prayer. Oh, for we overcame him. By the blood of a lamb. They overcame. And the word of their testimony. Is someone listening to me? Many people have sought time. Eh? Oh, I want to show you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's go there. First Thessalonians 4. I saw this yesterday. Had I said... I will not at me. I must pray. First Thessalonians 4. Look at this. I know you have read it before. Let me show you something. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I could have caught it, but I want you to be there. 4. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no way. No way. What's going on here? Okay. Okay. Holy Spirit, help me here. Uh -uh. Okay. Let me tell you what is there. So that somebody can help me here. Uh -uh. Paul said, for I had prayed to come to you, but Satan hindered me again and again. So, uh -huh. ah. That's why it's better to say it out. Glory to God. All right. 2, 17 and 18. All right. For brethren, having been taken... Yes. For brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart. 
and David more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But Satan hindered me. But Satan hindered me. And even now, we had wanted to send the money to you, but Satan hindered them. Even now, they had wanted to give you that admission, but Satan hindered them. Even now, you are supposed to have had a child, but Satan hindered them. Even now, you are supposed to have left this country, but Satan hindered you. Even now, you are supposed to have elevated and arise, but Satan hindered you. Even now, you are supposed to have served, but then Satan hindered you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? To hinder means to cut a man off his path. So there is this straight road. And then you just suddenly discover there is a goalie before you. There's no place to go. He has in that. There is no pressing in. We want to come to you. We want to come. But Satan in that. How many people here? God has said it is time to be blessed. But Satan in that. And you are there. You are still speaking in tongues. Saying, Me kata. You sleep small. You sleep small. Ah! <laughs> that altar must be active. There is a Satan at work in the world. Hey, if he can enter Paul, what about you? Hey! First Corinthians, First Chronicles 21 1. The Bible says, And Satan stood against Israel. What is the solution? Do you have a Bible? Let's go quickly to Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. Zechariah 12 10. I'm taking it slow because I want you to understand it. Zechariah 12 and verse 10. Bible says, And I will put on the house of David and on the inhabitant of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will not mourn. There is a spirit of grace and of supplication. The solution is prayer. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Tell your neighbor, the solution is prayer. And you know, Prophet Zechariah looked at the, uh, the devil and said, the Lord rebook you. You can only rebook the devil in the place of prayer. Revelations and 12 and verse 10. Bible says they overcame him by the blood of a lamb and the words of their testimony. Three ways in which you will overcome the devil. Let me just mention it to you. When it comes to him injuring you, injuring you number one, you must rebook the devil in prayer. Rebook the devil in prayer. I say, how oh, are you praying? You say you didn't mention the devil. Are you okay? Devil, I owe you ban today. As I go, I do the will of God. No devil is permitted in my life. In my affairs, I owe you bound. I rebook you in the name of Jesus. Number two, how do you do this? You plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, He makes me white as snow. Number three, by speaking, the Bible said they overcame Him by the blood of a lamb. That's Revelation 12 11. They overcame by the blood of a lamb and the word of their testimony. How is the word of your testimony? Tell the devil the goodness of the Lord in time past. You see, that's what the patriarchs used to say. Ah, David said, the Lord that delivered me from the bear. The Lord that delivered me from the lion. He's testifying. Speaking of the goodness, he said, he will deliver Goliath into my hands. No matter what you face, the Lord that gave me admission. The Lord that healed me. I am the Lord that healed thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I've got testimonies of God's healing. The devil knows he can't put nothing on me. Because I know if he did it before, he will do it again. Kala Hoshi Atayawa. He has not stopped doing it. He is a God. That's what he does consistently. What did I say you should do? Number one, rebook the devil in prayer. Number two, use the blood. Number three, of the goodness of God. When I speak of the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. And all he has done for me. 
my very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for saving me finally tell your neighbor finally it helps to fulfill the prophetic ministry of watchmen Ezekiel 3 I have so many readings. I'll just give you so that you can read at all. Ezekiel 3, 16 to 21. Ezekiel 33, 1 to 7. Ezekiel 3. I think I'll have to read Ezekiel 3. Kalaba shabala bada 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 bashata. Hima da bada bashi kataba. Shebala da bada bada hima da bashibala. Now it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man. I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. I think I can stop there. He said, therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. Listen to this. God has called every one of us into the ministry of watchman. You are the one. That word watchman, <laughs> don't let it deceive you. It means a guard. Someone who sits on the fence, on the wall. And sees what is coming against a city. Or what is coming into a city. See, listen to this. You are the watchman of your family. You are the watchman of your house. You are the watchman of your church. When the watchman sits, he sees, Ha! This is the spirit of calamity that is coming. He gathers people and tells them, It is time to pray. And when he sees a blessing coming, he says, Be coming. My boy. They want to divert it. Don't divert that thing. It's my promotion. He uses his spirit to thrust it home. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the morning? Because if you watch only at night, that's why people say, I only pray at night. If you don't watch in the morning, you have to be able at all times. Hey, hey, you will jump like there was a there was a devil to deliver. I say, and I'm not fasting. You don't have to be fasting. Where are they? You have to be ready. Watchman, you have to be ready. We are all watchmen of God. Stay by your altar and watch. Watch. I want to read Isaiah 62, verse 6. Listen to this. This is very important. Isaiah 62. And verse 6. <laughs> you know, some people say, ah, my mommy just, is, just was just suddenly sick. Uh, they have been planning it. If you have spiritual intelligence, you would have stopped it. I have set you, set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You, you will make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. <laughs> hey, should I show you one more? I'll show you one more. 52 verse 8, Isaiah. Come man to Madame Dadosha. Hey, Le Polo Brasataya. Are you ready to pray? Hilaria yo. Hilaria yo ti baba she lo do you. Hallelujah. Eba mi yo, apu mi lo bosi. Kolo, kolo. Isaiah 52 verse 8. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. There is a bringing back of Zion. There is a bringing back of Zion. In your home, in your family. In your business, in your ministry. But watchman, you have to call it forth. You have to bring it forth. Watchman, you have to bring it forth. Isaiah 56 verse 10 spoke of a reality that I have seen in the church of today. <laughs> uh, this is scripture, so this is scripture. I, I love scripture, it's complete, it's complete. It says, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. 
sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. When a dog is barking at night, you know something is going on. Is that not so? That's what the work of the watchman should be. But the dog is not barking, he's even sleeping. There is trouble. There is fire on the mountain top, and nobody seems to be on their own. Hey! <laughs> hey! Listen, there are people who are sleeping. There is an oracle of God to the church. Destruction will continue at the door, except we empower, enlist, and release watchmen to stay at the fence and the wall of the church. Look at your life. This wall shall not be broken. This wall shall not be broken. How shall it not be broken? By you. By you. This is a conversation we started last week. By you. By you. By you. By you. It is time to pray. Look at your neighbor say, it is time to pray. I want to give you an opportunity to enfire your altar. Your altar is not in church, it's in your spirit. Have I said that to you? Have I said that to you? And have I told you you are a priest? If the altar is inactive, it's not the devil, it is you. Because there is no fragrance, no incense going from heaven to you. And you are spraying perfume on your body, yet there is no incense from heaven. What a shame. What a calamity. Kalito palataya. Rise on your feet, gentlemen. It is time to pray. You know the prayer point already. Is that not so? Is that not so? Kalebaya. Prayer point number one. We are going to be batting prophetic purposes. I don't know what the plan of God is for your life. I don't know what God promised you. I don't know what God told you. But it is time to call it forth. It is time to bet it in the place of prayer. It is time to say, Lord, I receive a reality of that which you promised me. I hold fast to that child. I hold fast to that baby. I hold fast to my business. I call forth my prophetic purpose. I'm a prophet to the nation. And I call it forth now. Are you praying? Are you praying? Channels of my spirit. Open up. I am great of Father. Open up. No boundaries, no limits. Open up. You are going to pray. Lord, I receive prophetic instruction. Even for the next level. Someone needs to receive instruction. Instruction for the next level. It's a new season. It's a new season. No boundaries. No limit. My company has born science and the brain. No boundaries. No limits. When Paul, Barnabas, and all the apostles, they receive
for the seas, your ears for the ears, the hearing ears, the seed. The Lord made them both. Akuto koto kuta. Someone have laid hold of God. Someone have laid hold of God. Come on, come on. Hey, to 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 to. I see the chains falling. Hey! I hear the chains falling. In my own caravan, the way I am in motion. I hear the chains falling. Hey, but I don't believe in the Lord. I can't tell you, but I know the Lord. Hey! I hear the chains falling. In Jesus name Amen Listen You will need deliverance From every power and bondage of the devil It might be sin It might be weaknesses Stop saying it's a weakness Keep quiet It might be a delay it took you seven years uh, to get admission, uh, just as it took your sister seven years. A pala quite a hidaba. You are going to say, Lord, uh, I stand on Mount Zion. Uh, it's the place of deliverance, uh, and I obtain uh, even my deliverance. Uh, even tonight, 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 uh, even tonight. Uh, even tonight uh, Every Some people have been stagnant for the last seven years. Some people have been stagnant for years. You have been earning the same money, be on the same stage of life, being in the same place. I want you to say, Lord, tonight I press forward. Whatever is turning you down, even to yesterday, every power that makes every relationship broken. Deliverance, Ammon. And Daniel, pray. 
I wish our Daniels in this house. I wish our Daniels in this house. Kopoto Pataya. Epepe Pula Taba. Epe Taba 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 Taba. Epe Taba Taba Taba. You came for an encounter. You came for an encounter. You came for an encounter. Someone to say I'm pressing for. I am going for academically, financially. Thank you, Father. Prayer point number four. You know what it is. Listen to this. I have seen systems in that people. I have seen people say, unless I leave this place, you will not pass. I have seen people who say, are you not the daughter of uh, Ginika? Until I die, you cannot make it. We don't kill people. But you are going to say, Lord, I enforce your will in my life. Align my life to your will. I align people, systems, organization to your will. I align my system, my body, my person, my spirit to your will. Arakata ye kata kate kete bala. Ebra kata 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 bata bala. Ebra kata bata bata bata. Ebra kala bala 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 bala. Bata 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 bala. Ebra bala 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 bala. Ebra bala 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 bala. Your Situations, I confirm systems to begin to work for me. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, those who are the God according to His purpose.
Because we want to go to creative speaking. But before speaking, there must be prayer. Come on, begin to pray in talk
Holy Lord. Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid to speak big. Don't be afraid to speak big. My account palace is in billions. My account palace is in billions. I sponsor the gospel. I sponsor the gospel. I sponsor the gospel. My ministry spread, my business spread everywhere, everywhere. I am promoted, I am increased. Come on, come on. He said to Israel, Surely I have spoken in my ears, so will I also do. Don't keep quiet, don't start speaking.
themselves of his covenant. They call him Yahweh. 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 Make a covenant that I will keep this altar burning. I will keep this altar burning. Yahweh. I will keep this altar burning. I will keep altar burning. Come on. Come on. I will keep this altar burning. 
It's not a time to sing. Let the singers be singing. Make a covenant with God. Make a covenant with God. Close today, service. Raise your right hand up to God. Raise your right hand up to God and say after me, Yahweh, I come to you. I cut a covenant with you that from my altar shall sweet incense of prayers of praise rise. I will be an active priest at my active altar because I know. That as I pray, answers come even on the heart. It's a new day, it's a new beginning. I enter spiritually into better. I enter spiritually into better. The house of God, the house of God. Everywhere I see God, I hear Him. His realities, his signatures are in my life. In the name of Jesus. From generation, generations, after generation. We are done. Have a great evening.